the history of the death whistle. Speaker Ian Mersel of Mexico Law, England. Since the end of the last century, I have conducted more than 200 independent studies on Mexican aerophones and wind resonators. My electronic papers with the results are available on the internet at clapizzalli.com. I began with the curiosity and love of a child, and over time I progressed to detailed formal research based on the archaeoscience of sounds. These studies have never been included in any institutional research or educational programs. I had to learn various techniques such as acoustics, signal analysis and modelling in various materials. Over a thousand experimental models have been made and analysed. The method and techniques used could be applied to every important recovered ancient death, life, wind resonator and its sounds, including those mentioned here. Death, life or wind resonators were exclusively used in several zones of ancient Mexico. They belong to a singular family of rare wind resonators that can reproduce noisy sounds to imitate animal calls, winds and storms, but they're not well known. Their original information was lost. Several ancient wind resonators of this sonorous family have been recovered. Since the last century, some of them have been analysed by several authors. They published very little information on their shape, morphology, decoration and several designations, mainly, but their sounds are not known. The only known recordings of noisy sounds of this type were found on two audio tracks of the disc Pre-Columbian Instruments of Mexico, produced by Folkways Records, that were recorded from two storm whistles in the Smithsonian Museum, but I was not allowed to reproduce them in my public presentations. In 1962, the first drawings of spring aerophones were published by engineer José Luis Franco. One Aztec or Mexica instrument was decorated with a skull. Another has the face of an owl, also associated with death. Franco published the first drawing of the internal sound mechanism. The spring is the globular internal chamber, which functions as a Helmholtz resonator. Franco analysed the spring aerophones for ten years, but only two papers on them were published. In 1988, musician Guillermo Contreras published a study of four death whistles from Maya and Aztec or Mexica cultures and a drawing of the internal structure of one of them. In 1999, archaeologist Salvador Guillem Arroyo published photos and drawings of two death whistles that were found in the hands of a skeleton recovered in a burial in front of the Ejecat temple at the archaeological site of Tlatelolco, Mexico City. Such whistles disappeared when the invaders from Spain came, as did all the rest of the ancient objects, monuments and writings that they could see five centuries ago. I was not allowed to analyse the whistles and their sounds were not published. The whistles from Tlatelolco are the first known ones associated with death that have an archaeological context and it is a very complex and rich one. Forty-one burials with skeletons were found in that ceremonial space as shown in the photo of the exploration in 1964. It's believed that the individual was sacrificed in honour of Ehecat, the wind god. It was common practice for people to be sacrificed in a plea for rain and for an end to widespread famine and drought, 1964. The photo shows a burial with a skeleton by Salvador Guillem, 1988. The exact location of the burial with the two wind resonators is shown by the red arrow. The burial was located in front of the Ehecat temple facing east. The resonators were associated with death by the skeleton and with wind by the temple of Ehecat and the noise of wind, though several types of wind are known to exist in nature and in ancient mythology. These two Mexican concepts are shown in the Borgia Codex with Mictlantecuhtli, death, and Ehecat, wind. They are important and very complex in Mexican mythology and ideology. They represent one of the main dialectical concepts of opposites, such as life and death, day and night, and so on. Though two concepts, they were seen as one at the same time. Death is also life, and one follows the other. Death is a journey to another life. The wind resonators show the same concepts, both visually and audibly. In 2002, I discovered a photo of the first known wind resonator from the collection of musical composer Jorge Dacher, here shown in a drawing. Another very similar one from Huexotla, Estado de México, belongs to the collection of Gregorio Cortés Vergara and his brother Mario. 
these wind resonators had never been analysed, discussed or studied in any published form. The oldest known wind noise resonator is the extraordinary Olmec sonorous ilmenite whistle that was used three millennia ago. Nearly 140,000 similar objects were found in the archaeological site of San Lorenzo in the state of Veracruz. My doctoral thesis on it was published online, but it has been kept in obscurity because I couldn't find professors or teachers to review it through a research institution, although some results from my research on it have been presented at some of the best academic forums in the world, such as those of acoustic and music archaeology. It shows that ancient resonators can and must be analysed as profoundly as possible using techniques of archaeoscience. Many similar ancient oral resonators made of rock, bone and pottery have been recovered in several states such as Oaxaca, Jalisco, Veracruz, Guerrero, Querétaro and Estado de México. In terms of morphology they contain the same hearth chamber common to all ancient Mexican noise generators. This type of oral resonator was still being used in rural areas of Mexico up until the middle of the last century, a bit like my first whistle made from a metal bottle cap. Furthermore, the complex dynamics of the sound mechanism was finally published. The complex system of the chaos chamber couldn't be simulated using mathematical models or computers, nor even in fluid dynamics or aerodynamics labs. The simulation was made at home with a large model and with talc injected into the chamber using a foot pump used for inflatable rubber boats. It was estimated that in a real resonator the wind noise begins less than two milliseconds after the pumping of the air. The following video shows a slow visualisation of the turbulent flow dynamics of air with talc injected inside a chaos chamber and Helmholtz resonator. In 2002, I published the internal structure of my first experimental models of death resonators, analysed using scientific techniques. The sound mechanism of the death whistle was described and the functioning of its main elements was explained. In 2007, a template for their construction was published. This led to copies of death whistles being commercialised by several people, mainly in Mexico and the USA, but most of these are of poor quality and acoustic power. The original source was not mentioned by the fakers and they didn't bother to analyse and show ancient wind whistles and their sounds. Several inventions were published in papers and videos claiming to refer to their ancient use in wars but without providing any supporting evidence. Thanks to the web, millions have since been led up the proverbial guardian path about death whistles. Many experimental models have been constructed and their noisy sounds analysed. Experimental models and their sounds can tell us more than the little published material available. The complex frequencies of the noisy sounds can be shown with spectrograms. It's a type of sound that cannot be properly described in words and musical notation. You have to listen to them. When two or more models are played at the same time, very special effects can be produced, but they need to be listened to live in order to feel the full effects in both ears and brain. In 2006, archaeologist Adjir Bot published in a PhD thesis photos and the first known computed tomographies CT, of some aerophones of noise from the Ethnological Museum of Berlin. Other authors, such as Susan Rawcliffe, Vanessa Rodens and Gonzalo Sanchez Santiago, published their studies in several papers, including two doctoral theses on other ancient noise generators recovered from Veracruz and Oaxaca states and from the Mayan zone, but I don't have time to comment on them here. They use different terms. For example, Rawcliffe called them chamber duct flutes, but they are not conventional flutes and they have not been included in any classification system of musical or acoustic instruments. In 2006, I was able to analyse the first fragment of a wind resonator that was found on the surface of an archaeological site located at the top of a hill called Masatepetl, 
Cerro del Venado or Judío, south of Mexico City, by archaeologist Francisco Rivas Castro. The results of the study were presented in several national and international academic forums that were interested in them. The fragment is important because it shows the internal structure of the son sonorous chamber without the need for an X-ray or a CT scan because its decorative face had been broken. Its sonorous system is in working order to generate sounds, but these are not the same as they would have been when the instrument had its decorative face, forming the exit chamber. That fragment was found on the surface to the southwest of the main structure, A, of the archaeological site, but it was not contextualised. We believe that it came from the early Aztec or Mexica period, judging by the ceramic pieces that were recovered from the surface in the same area. It was the first death resonator to be analysed and assessed using proper acoustic techniques. Its sound pressure was 102 decibels, measured with a sonometer at 1 metre and 0 degrees, or an acoustic radiated power of 0 0.2 watts. Its noisy sounds were also analysed with spectral techniques. Its power is not very great, but it can be heard at a considerable distance, because its main frequencies are generated within the range of maximum hearing sensitivity for humans, between 1 and 6 kHz, as is shown in the sound spectrogram. Its noisy sounds are the first recordings of any ancient death resonator. In 2015, a cremated wind death resonator was analysed. It was found in Isca Teopan de Cuauhtémoc in Guerrero State, but details of the archaeological exploration are missing. The resonator was found in a sack with cremated bones and obsidian blades by archaeologist Jorge Cervantes Martínez. He allowed me to make a detailed study of this, the first complete resonator of this type. I don't know exactly where the resonator was found, but have been told it was found within the main structure. It shows a style indicative of resonators found in the Basin of Mexico. The sack where the resonator was found contained the cremated bones of two skeletons already identified as those of the figure in question. The photo shows green obsidian blades. It seems that they came from the Navaja site in Hidalgo State. The audible range of the wind sound was measured in the playing fields of the National Polytechnic Institute, Mexico City. The red line shows a distance of 250 steps, about three soccer fields or a baseball field. It means the resonator sounds could then, and can today, be clearly heard inside any ancient ceremonial space. The internal structure and morphology of the resonator is shown in the X-ray and the drawing of the sound mechanism. The sound pressure was between 90 and 106 decibels and a radiated acoustic power of 0 0.0125 to 0 0.5 watts. The generated frequencies are shown in the spectrogram and a short recording of its sounds can be heard. It is the first time I have produced and recorded ancient sounds of this type. The exact ancient use of wind resonators has been lost, but they can be rediscovered. For example, Berta Sandoval uses some of my models in her shows of La Catrina during the Mexican Day of the Dead festival. Nora Elsa Asencio Valdez used recordings of my experimental models of several wind resonators in her MS thesis on an electroacoustic composition, Four Elements, a Natural Pre-Columbian Experience for the Music Technology Group, University of York, England, 2006. The four elements of nature are air, water, fire and earth. The following sounds are from track one, air, and a clay frog.
Enrico Ciappella created Trio Cadenza, or encrypted poetry, inspired by The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe, for three skull whistles. He used some of my models. His composition was played by the Orchestra of Cincinnati University in 2009. Flautist Abraham Elias played the composition in Tianjin, China, in 2010. Cristina Garcia Islas used some of my models of death whistles in her musical composition Doctoral Thesis at the University of Montreal, Canada. It is the first doctoral thesis to include models of that kind or of other Mexican resonators. Other experimental models are shown in the photo and the noisy sounds of some of them were recorded for an interview for Associated Press in 2008 and can be heard here. Models can also be incorporated into conferences and presentations. A wide variety of noisy sounds were generated at a conference for the exhibition of music and art at the Museo del Palacio de Bellas Artes of Mexico City this year. In the background is a segment from the beautiful mural The Creator by Diego Rivera. 
The sounds could be heard throughout the big open space of the museum, from the first to the second floor. This presentation may be used for personal and educational purposes if its source is cited. For commercial uses, written permission of the author is required. Thank you.